Okay, welcome to the Future Learn live session. Today we have a special guest, Albina here. So uh, today we have a very good opportunity to hear Albina's. Um, okay, welcome, Peter. Um, so to, today we have a very good opportunity to listen to Albina's experience as a professional astronomer. Albina is a professional astronomer. Hi, Peter. Today we have Albina. Albina mm -hmm. uh, has a PhD from UCL, right? Yes, Uni that's right. University of College London. Yeah. Um, so she's a professional astronomer. And then she has many international experiences. And today um, we should be able to hear a lot of experiences from her. So first, Albina, uh, thank you for joining us. And then uh, could you introduce yourself a little bit, please? Oh, sure. Um, should I do it with my slides? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, you have a slide. Uh, um, so let's try bit. to share okay. your slide. So it will be like this here. Yes. Like this, right? Yeah, or you can maximize it. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Like this? Okay. Just, yeah, that's fine. Or uh, is it better on a separate window? Yeah, maybe for, for recording, I suspect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me try to put it in a separate window now. Mm -hmm. Then, like this, like this. Let me share the Albino slide, which is here. Can you see? Maybe a full screen or something? Maybe that's good enough. Is this good enough? Is it too small for people online? I'm not sure. Yes, I can see it. Yeah, you can okay, see. thank you very much. So it's all yours, Albino. Oh, okay. So uh, thank you, thomas -san, for inviting me uh, to be a guest um, interviewee yes. <laughs> um, in this session. So I'll tell uh, everyone a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Alvina, um, and uh, my Chinese name is Wen Yilian, and I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow mm -hmm. at NCTS, uh, the physics division. So NCTS has um, multiple hubs across Taiwan, and one of which is in Xinzhou in NTHU. Um, so I'm based um, on this campus. Um, so let me... Right, so um, thanks to Da for inspiring me to use a roadmap. I think that's a very good idea to tell you guys a little bit about um, how I started um, my journey in becoming um, an astrophysics Okay. student and mm -hmm. also being in astrophysics um so it's a little bit tiny but um I, that's the point of the whole point of it so i'm originally from brunei uh a tiny country <laughs> in w southeast. where is it where is it uh, it's here a little dot okay okay I see, yeah I see. in red um mm -hmm. that's a little country in southeast asia um very near to the equator which means that we have no seasons so it's hot all year round we have summer all year round so we don't change our wardrobe <laughs> which is paradise, paradise. <laughs> which is a paradise for many people um and this is a baby picture of me maybe you can recognize oh, so me <laughs> cute. and this is my mom <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys look like the same <laughs> we look very similar. very similar a lot of yeah. people said that before so i'm i'm, I'm born in brunei i grew up in brunei mm. i uh, went to school in Brunei until I was about 16. So I think that's about like senior high school uh, over here. Hmm. And then I moved uh, to the UK for higher okay. education. So I was um, uh, at King's College London to do my bachelor's, which is mm -hmm. my three-year degree in physics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I moved on to UCL to do my master's in physics uh, mm -hmm. for a year. So that's my graduation pictures. Um, what got me into astrophysics, perhaps, is what um, maybe many of you are curious about. Um, yes. This is a, also a good opportunity for me to think a little bit about why I decided to do astrophysics, because I started as a science student uh, and I did physics first. Hmm. Um, but what happened was that during my degree, there was an opportunity in the summer 
Mm. So over here, um, I think most students are familiar. You always have like summer projects, summer courses. There was a Arctic Science School, mm -hmm. um, and it was in the Swedish Institute of Space Physics in Kiruna. So perhaps some of you have heard of Kiruna. It's an exotic little town, mm -hmm. uh, north of Sweden. Okay, it's within the Arctic Circle, okay. which means that between like maybe the November to January, mm -hmm. you probably don't get to see the daylight much. So um, very, very long hours of nighttime, mm -hmm. which makes it perfect to see the Northern Lights. Oh. Um, so the selling point <laughs> of this uh, school was that there was a trip uh, to, there was an opportunity to see the Northern Lights. So mm -hmm. this is actually what was in the school, the courses, the syllabus. Okay. And it caught my attention and I haven't seen the Northern Lights in person before. So mm -hmm. I signed up mm. to go on this trip. Um, and what this, I found- This is when you're in UK. Yeah, this was, I was UK? a student okay. yeah, in the UK. So it was one of the summers I decided I'm not going to go home for that summer, mm -hmm. but I'm going to sign up to this school and learn more about astrophysics and also see the Northern Lights. Okay. Uh, when I was compiling the slides for mm. um, this session today, I found out that this school is still ongoing. So it's an annual thing. They okay. still do it now. Okay. So for students who are interested to see the Northern Lights and learn more about um, um, Aurora Physics, uh, you can have a look at this website. And so I can still join? You can still join and see the Northern Lights. <laughs> There's an the opportunity. Is there age limit? <laughs> um, I think it's only for, maybe it's only for students. I think okay. it's free. Mainly for students. Free for students. Okay. Um, the classes are free, I think. Uh, but the trip, so basically the flights and the hotel, unless you get like a scholarship, otherwise you have to pay for it. Yes. Okay, okay. I think that I think that's what's the Makes sense. current situation. But okay. please check this website for more accurate information. That was what I had uh, when I had a quick look. Mm -hmm. So this is, um maybe they can see my cursor, but right. this is the Institute of Space Physics where the lectures were held really nice. Lots and lots of snow. I've never seen so much snow before in my life until then. Did you say this is summer school? It's a, uh, it's not really a, it's a school. I can't remember if it's summer or winter. <laughs> uh -huh. It was, but there are a lot of snow. So. Yeah, it was a lot of snow. So it must be winter then. Okay, okay. Yeah, winter school. Um, and then, um, but the sad thing was, I was there for about a week. It mm -hmm. was snowing so much, there uh -huh. was we cannot see the northern lights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are clouds and snowing. So yeah, oh, pretty okay. much. We tried, we tried every night, but we couldn't see the northern lights. But okay. that was when I realized that hmm, astrophysics is really interesting, really beautiful, and mm -hmm. I thought like, oh give it a try. Okay. So I, when I was uh, applying for my master's, I decided to do some smaller courses, electives on mm -hmm. astrophysics. And okay. That was how I started having some uh, interaction with astrophysics and mm -hmm. learning about astrophysics. Yeah. Um, then after, after graduating from my master's, mm -hmm. I, I decided that uh, it's quite fun. So I decided to apply and study for a PhD. Uh -huh. in theoretical astrophysics oh. so that was how i moved on from physics to astrophysics um still so in ucl what, what did you major in as a uh, master oh it was in physics not, uh, not astronomy no not okay. astronomy so i, I was a physics student throughout okay. until my phd mm -hmm. and then i switched to theoretical astrophysics okay. um i was still in ucl but ucl has multiple campuses mm -hmm. um and um, the PhD in theoretical astrophysics was um, in a place called MSSL, so that stands for the Mallard Space Science Lab. Okay. It's a huge mansion on the mm, hills yes, yes. of Surrey, so it's really nice in the summer. Oh. You can see cows. Oh, so cute. So <laughs> there are, cute. There's a cow yeah. farm, so if you're lucky, you get an office that's facing uh -huh. the hills. You can see cows in the summer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and there was one time the, there was an electricity a power cut. And the oh. gates were open, the cows escaped. Oh. It was quite dangerous. What, what did you do? Was so that dangerous? Okay. Yeah. We got an email from the security <laughs> of the campus saying that do not come in. There are cows on the loose. <laughs> we need to get them back uh -huh. before you go in because um they can be quite dangerous. And yeah, because some people drive in to get to work. Uh, okay. Yeah. But they're big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one thing I remember really well. Um, this is um People uh, in my office, uh, perhaps uh, mm. Thomas may recognize that this is Alice when he was younger. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see, I can see. Yeah, so uh, Alice I, was another fellow here in Taiwan until recently. Yes. Mm. 
So uh, these are some people in our office. Uh, I think most of us are still doing science. Some people have moved on to work in industry. Okay. Um, but this was a little party that we had after work one time. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite quite a diverse community. People work in different fields, even astrophysics. Uh -huh. um, and this is, uh, as we all know, we need a lot of coffee when we're doing research. <laughs> so much. So this is a little coffee so there's machine. there's a coffee tower. <laughs> yeah, so we, we contribute, we chip in uh, to pay for coffee okay. in our office. So this is a little coffee machine uh -huh. uh, and build a coffee tower. Yeah, so so this is how I start, um, decided to do a PhD mm -hmm. uh, for a few years uh, on the hills with the cows. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and actually, during my PhD, mm -hmm. I visited. I had the opportunity to visit NTHU a few times. That was how I met Thomas San and I his think group. that's the first time we met. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah, and we actually met in maybe journal Astro PH. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, but okay. I couldn't find a picture of Astro PH. I don't think we take photos in Astro PH. Maybe. Maybe we didn't. <laughs> well, very serious. We're very <laughs> Just serious. Just doing science. <laughs> Just doing science. So I couldn't find a photo, but I found a photo I took of Taipei 101 good, good, when good. I was uh, visiting. So this was taken in, uh, I think, Elephant Mountain. I went for a hike. Right, and right. it's very beautiful. beautiful I just wanted to show people how beautiful uh, Taipei is. Uh, mm -hmm. People will consider coming to visit or to study here one day. Right. This would be something nice to visit. Mm. Um, so yeah, I had a chance to visit NTHU a few times, mm. uh, and that was how I started interacting with more people here. Is that, is that uh, because uh, your supervisor had some collaboration yes. with uh, Professor here, right? Yes, he visits here quite often. He was giving lecture series yes. as yes. well in the summer. Um, so there was some connection there. Mm -hmm. um and and that summer we i just decided to tag along and and uh, talk to people here and do a collaborate more on research that's wonderful that's yeah. wonderful yeah so that was how i had my first visit to taiwan mm -hmm. um and i just want to say it was a very strange time to be a student during the pandemic ah, right. um, maybe all of us have similar experiences mm -hmm. at different stages so mm -hmm. um i had to, I think like most of you, like I had to attend classes on Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is like how my classroom is like most of the time. <laughs> um, in the screen. In the screen. And then I had to be writing because I was a final year student um, towards the end mm -hmm. of my PhD. And then I had to write my thesis at home. This is my cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, this is how it's like because we don't get to be um we don't get to attend classes in person right we don't get to be in university so i was at home i was back in brunei uh with my family but i i, I read a um, interesting report recently mm -hmm. on astro ph uh, mm -hmm. papers that uh, the number of average number of papers mm -hmm. astronomers published mm -hmm. increased Ooh. during a pandemic mm -hmm. because they cannot travel so they just stay home and I write. kept writing papers oh, wow that's interesting Okay, so mm -hmm. that's good to know. Um, people were, I, I think it's probably a, a good and bad thing because I think um, there were some reports saying that the number of hours that people were in general became longer during the pandemic. Because oh, really? Really? we were at home. And usually in the past, people, when they go home, they try not to work as much anymore right, right, because right. you travel home. You yes. drive or you take the bus. Uh -huh. But when you're working at home, you need to have that cutoff. It's a bit harder because your kitchen you're at home, it's right. just not next right. door. So, so people do work long, longer hours over right. the pandemic. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. You have to mm. be careful. Maybe, you know, you can work, continue, continue working, 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 and it may be unhealthy. So. Mm. Yeah, I think that was one of the things that um, came up on, on the news as well, to remind people about okay. work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the other thing that was funny for me was I defended my thesis on Zoom. <laughs> I'm not sure if any of you I'm have sorry been. To, to <laughs> hear that. Yeah. yeah so I had, it was just me and my two examiners on Zoom, and then we went through. It was a three, three, two, three and a half hour uh -huh. a Viva. Uh -huh. uh, so in the UK, we call it a Viva. It's equivalent to a defense. Um, okay. You just have to defend your thesis, what you what you've written. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on Zoom, and then uh, this is my thesis. It's an electronic copy because um, at that time the pandemic was very serious, so mm. I couldn't actually print my thesis and bind it 
in uh, person. Uh. Uh, so there's an e-copy in the e-library. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I graduated on Zoom as well, <laughs> which was a very interesting experience. Yeah. Um, we I couldn't get the ropes on time uh -huh. uh, because they have to be delivered from the UK. Right. So I just wore my my old hat from my degree. Oh, that's that's that works. <laughs> this is in, this is my room where I wrote my thesis, and uh -huh. then just announce the names as if that you were walking up the stage, but you're just sitting there, and uh -huh. you turn on the video when your name is announced. <laughs> so people can see your face when your name is called. Yes. Ah. And then the link is sent to everyone, so like your family. Uh -huh. Uh, so as if they're there in person to watch your oh, graduate. They can watch it. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. Um, but what we were told is that after this, uh, we had the chance to do like a, what do you, a catch up graduation. Okay. So after the pandemic improved, uh, we were given a chance to do it in person. But oh, it great. was um, it was a the time didn't match for me because I was about to move here. Mm -hmm. So I did not attend it in person. Oh, too bad. Yeah, yeah, but my parents decided that I should take a photo still. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's so, beautiful. So yeah. I took one, I took a few in the studio uh, mm -hmm. just to remember it. Very nice, very yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, so so that's just a little a little background okay, on, okay. on how I got into astronomy and a little bit introduction about myself. What about party over your PhD success defense? Ah. Usually after PhD success yes. or PhD defense, there's party, right? I That's had, also online? Yes, you mean with my office mates, because it's yeah. all different yes. time zones. Oh, uh, it was quite hard. It, it was quite hard to arrange the defense okay. because my examiners were in the UK. Oh, my other examiner is in Taiwan. Okay. So my 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 external examiner is actually a professor okay. in NCU. Right, nearby. Right, right. So it was really hard to arrange the time because of the time difference, like oh. eight, eight hours. Party, um, there wasn't really a real party. Oh, I'm sorry after, to hear. Maybe difference. we should throw a one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah, but I remember it, I think I had KFC with my family after that. <laughs> we couldn't that's even, good. That's good. We couldn't it's go like out Christmas. for a party. Uh. Ah, because it was even. the pandemic, okay. so we we'll only take away. Oh, okay, so you have to do it at home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh. Well, that's a pity because when I was in the US or mm -hmm. even in Taiwan, we have a, usually throw a big, big oh, party in, after, after successful yeah, defense. Yeah, I think that's the, mm -hmm. not the culture, like the right, normal right. practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be quite nice with mm -hmm. all your friends mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and teachers. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, that's a, that's a wonderful story. Um, any questions from audience? I don't have any particular questions at this point. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So, I have a question, Albina. May I ask? Um, what did you? What was your major? Um, when you're a uh, PhD student. What, what uh -huh. do do? Uh -huh. Okay, I should prepare some slides for that too. So maybe I can talk a little bit about that. So I actually work mainly on magnetic fields. Okay. Um, let me go to that. Which grade or Laura? Yeah. So so that's that's the related. Related. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's so, wonderful. Oh. so um, I mentioned earlier, like I was very excited to see the Northern Lights, yes. and then for I think some of you may know that the Northern Lights are created because of the charged particles in the solar wind that's interacting with our Earth's magnetic mm -hmm. field. So we right. get to see these lights because they are emission from these charged particles. Mm -hmm. So that got me really interested in magnetic fields, and I had my first um first encounter with magnetic fields when I was doing my master's, not mm. a lot. And it was during my PhD when I truly actually um, got my hands dirty <laughs> with studying about magnetic fields. Mm. Um, so perhaps I could show you this slide first. Um, okay. So this is a slide that I like to show in my talks. Oh. Um, and I just wanted to tell everyone that I guess um, about everywhere around us, magnetic fields are everywhere around us. And these are just some examples that we are pretty familiar with, like um, the sun is magnetized, the earth magnetosphere is also magnetized. Um, but we know that like the galaxy that we live in is also magnetized. So this is actually uh, okay. a fingerprint uh -huh. uh, of our uh, galaxy's magnetic fields taken by Planck, which is a telescope. And then as we move on to larger scales, like galaxy, um, galaxies and galaxy clusters, we know that they're also magnetized because we see this radio polarization. Mm -hmm. So these are the beautiful pictures that tells us. Mm. Um, so the question is, if you move on to the largest scales, 
that we can measure, like filaments and voids, um, are they also magnetized? We think they must be. Mm -hmm. They must be really weak because mm -hmm. um, they're on such large scales. And yet we should learn a little bit more about them because mm -hmm. they would help us understand some of the big science questions. So okay. these are like the things that we would like to find answers to. Hmm. Like where did the first magnetic fields come from? Must come from somewhere, but mm -hmm. we don't know where. Mm -hmm. And how do they evolve when the universe expands to what we see right. today? Right. So these are the science questions that we try to answer in our research mm -hmm. that I try to contribute a little bit in mm -hmm. my work. Yeah. Um, so what was uh, your thesis topic? It's um, um, right. What the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my thesis is about the observational signatures. Um, mm -hmm that these magnetic fields have uh, li living like imprints um, in the large scales. So um, magnetic fields are invisible. We can't uh, really see them. Right. Um, and if you recall from like high school, yes. we have a bar magnet mm. and then we can put iron filings and then you can see like the iron filing starts to um, make patterns and they would tell us about the magnetic field lines. Mm. Um, that's if you recall from um, from your little high school experiment. Mm -hmm. So we need to do some kind of CSI, like those oh, are the traces, oh, oh. right? Okay. That we can't see, but we do the, We try to do a similar thing um, in, in astrophysics research. Instead, we use radio polarization as a okay. tool. Um, so what you see, for example, in here, mm -hmm. you can see, if you zoom in a little bit closer, you can see like there are like lines on top. Those are the vectors, or you mm. can think of it as just lines mm. that tells us the direction as to which the magnetic field is moving, a bit mm. like the iron filings mm. near a bar magnet. So what I'm trying to study is this iron filings and what kind of magnetic fields do we have at such large scales. Uh, mm. okay. How do you know, observe magnetic, how do you know magnetic field from radio polarization? Ah, so I actually did not prepare an extra slide on that. I wasn't sure if it's too technical, but I can talk to you a little bit about that. Okay. So for radio polarization, you can think a little bit like listening to the radio. Mm. Um, so this is really old school. So I guess for younger students, they are probably more familiar with things like YouTube and Spotify. Right. But in the old days, like our, our parents' generation. Or <laughs> I watch YouTube too. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Remember, you have a radio yes, and you yes. need to tune it right. in the FM right. and then to your favorite channel. And then yeah. you get like uh, an antenna on your radio oh. and the antenna will give you the right frequency. Then you can hear your favorite DJ playing your favorite song. Right. So radio telescopes work in the same way. Uh -huh. You have a dish, um, maybe something like this. Let me show you here. So this is how a, a radio telescope typically looks like dishes. Mm -hmm. And then you try to measure the radio waves that's coming towards the Earth. Okay. Just like how you're trying to listen to music. Right. Um, and then from there, because radio waves are polarized, mm -hmm. so it's a bit like wearing sunglasses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and looking at the sun, and then you can see that it gets dimmer at certain areas, so mm. the polarization changes. Mm. By measuring it's like the, angle, right? Angle yes. of the light wave. Mm -hmm. Yes, the angle changes, mm. and by measuring the change in the angle, Mm. you get some information about the magnetic fields because it's the magnetic fields that's causing the change in the angle mm -hmm. of the radio waves mm -hmm. alongside other other things but magnetic fields is one of the ingredients okay. necessary okay mm -hmm. so even the magnetic field is invisible you can observe it in this way mm, yes oh, that's yeah. interesting interesting mm. okay may i also ask about what was the uh, research life in uk Ah, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So research life in the UK. Um, the the experiences are a bit different because I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow, uh -huh. um, here. Whereas when I was in the UK, I was a student. So right. I think the experience as a student and as a postdoctoral fellow could be quite different. Okay. Um, but let's let's start with being a student first. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so in the UK, I think being a student, um. We, we get a lot of opportunities to go to classes. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the differences would be like during your PhD, at least in the in Taiwan, I think students are required to still take classes to yes. still get credit. That's right. In the UK, we don't have to take classes. There are no mandatory classes. No classes? Oh. You can sit in the class if you want to learn something, but you don't have to sit for exams. Really? Yeah. But then there will be no students in the class, no? 
Um, they are still students on um, the postgraduate courses, so okay. master students have to take exams, so they will uh, be mostly okay, okay. master students. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. PhD students do not have. To. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not compulsory. Okay. Yeah, but That's people good. people do come in to sit and learn something um, hmm. more if they want. Hmm. Um. So that's one of the difference okay. I think. Um. And then, um, the research environment in the actually actually in Taiwan, PhD students still need to take some classes. Mm -hmm. Um. How many do you know? Mm -hmm. So actually, PhD students are, are a little bit busy, especially mm -hmm. during the first couple of hour, couple mm -hmm. of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I noticed. Yeah, and one of the difference I noticed is as well as uh, PhD students in Taiwan work really long hours. Or maybe maybe most of the people I shared an office with when I was a visiting student, they work really hard. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. That's a little different from my students, no? <laughs> no I think your students work hard too. So okay, these uh, graduate students, my graduate student Tom is here helping our, our broadcast. But mm -hmm. Tom, do you really work uh, very long hours? Oh, no. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Tom works long hours. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So in UK, students work very long hours. Mm, maybe relatively speaking, I would say shorter hours. Or maybe ah, okay. they don't yeah, spend... so in, in Taiwan. Yeah, they work longer. Office mates. Okay, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see them in the office a lot more. Okay, okay. And then in the UK, people probably tend to disappear on time, like around five or six. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So that's that's usually but whether or not they work when they get home, I, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe I, they continue. I guess <laughs> not because they're going home, right? <laughs> so. well, actually I felt the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I went to you know University of Tokyo for PhD mm -hmm. and there students work very long hours. Mm -hmm. You know, at night, midnight, mm -hmm. weekends, mm -hmm. people working, students are working all the time. Mm -hmm. But then I went to US. Mm -hmm. as a visiting graduate student mm -hmm. and then in US uh, American people mostly do not work at night or mm -hmm. weekends mm -hmm. they just go home at 5 or 6 p.m they mm -hmm. never work on mm -hmm. weekends mm -hmm. so that was a oh, but still they produce a lot of good results mm -hmm. so that was a little bit shocking to me mm -hmm. I guess it was people might are more efficient some people mm -hmm. are more efficient Mm. I, and I, I'm not sure if this is one of the reasons because I've been a student here mm. for a while. I've been a student in the UK, but at least when I was in the UK, we have to commute to to go to the office, so oh, we don't oh, live okay. we don't live on, on site. the campus. Oh. Yeah. So um, in in my earliest life, I said that I was on the hills, right? So mm. that was quite secluded. It was like near a village, uh -huh. and then we usually have to couple. So a few of us would share the patrol costs, uh -huh. get on the car, uh -huh. and then go to the office together. And because, every day, yeah, every day, like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's no the bus, the public bus only is very irregular because it's in the village. Okay. Yeah, and then even if it gets to the lab, it stops at the foot of the hill, and you have to hike <laughs> to go up. Okay. Yeah, that's inconvenient. Yes. Yes. Oh. oh just for that particular lab but if um when i was in ucl on the main campus that mm. was in london so that was very convenient like it okay. was just next to the it was just right next to the station okay yeah so i think one of the reasons for people to be on time could be because you have to go home because right. it's quite far you right. have to remember to you need to drive uh. and then you need to cook right so i think being in asia or at least in taiwan is um it's a blessing because food is so good and cheap and accessible right so you don't really have to cook and you can save time right you can just right. eat quickly right. uh in the canteen and then right. come back to work yes so maybe that's why people are always can work really long hours here ah that's yeah. true yeah, yeah and the foods are very cheap in taiwan mm. and then also there are a lot of food shops like mm. sandwiches those mm. kind of uh takeaway shops mm. are everywhere mm -hmm. so you can just easier to easy to buy cheap food so mm. It's very convenient mm. for busy people, I think. Yeah, and then I guess if you get home and then you have to start cooking, it will take a few hours. Oh, time, yes. Then by the time you finish, you're not going to do any more work, and that's the right. end of the day. Right. So maybe that's why okay. part of the reason, okay. I think. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So which which style do you do like? I I like to cook. I think it okay. helps me distress, uh -huh. but it takes too much time and effort. 
That's true. So I, at the moment, I really enjoy being in Taiwan because I don't have to cook. Right, you just buy. <laughs> yeah, food, and food know. is so good. So oh. I haven't tried all the food yet. There's so much variety. Okay. okay. Um, and I think it will take me a while before I get through all the different types of food that's available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you if you audience have any questions, uh, please jump in and ask. Oh, mm -hmm. You're welcome to interrupt. Okay, then next, uh, you uh, um, you became a postdoc, right? Mm. So, in Taiwan is the, your first postdoc. Yes, it's so, my first one. Okay. Mm. How to that experience? Mm. Oh, so I I started in December, so it's been about okay. two months and a bit as a postdoc i okay. have to say it's quite different from being a student okay you really feel like um it's quite a jump from mm -hmm. being a student to like properly working mm -hmm. more independent right uh so you have to really um have ideas for your research and you have right. more control about how it's going right uh the good and the bad i think mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um and then i think um I was organizing a winter school last week. Right, right. So that was quite a new experience. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I could share a little bit about that. So um, I think it's, I, I didn't imagine that there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. to organize a meeting that's mm -hmm. hybrid. Mm -hmm. So we know that having organizing a meeting is hard work, mm -hmm. even for an on site meeting. But right. When it's hybrid, you have to take care of the on online component as well. Right. At the and same to, time. Yeah. yeah. And to make sure that online participants are equally engaged. Right. So we need to have extra help in setting up the WebEx, mm -hmm. for example, and then having extra channels for people to catch up. Mm -hmm. Because um, one of the good things about hybrid meetings is that students who are not in the local time zone can join. So people from all around the world. Right. In the past, only students who can afford to travel mm -hmm. can come to conferences. Right. But now it's open to everyone. I think that's one of the great things that's that came good. out yes. from the pandemic. Mm. So more accessibility for everybody. Mm. Um, and because of that, we need to make sure that there's channels like Slack. Um, or emails right. so that right. people can send in questions and then we can answer them. We can mm. pass them to the lecturers and then they can answer them. Um, in um to follow up after that so that people can who are not in the same time zone watching it live mm. can still participate mm. um so that was one thing that we had to take care of mm. and i think um a, a thing that we try to do um manage well so that the students can learn more mm. Mm. But nowadays people use slack to mm. ask questions or discussions right mm. Mm. i found it quite useful because because Another reason is the time during a conference is limited for, mm. for questions and discussions. Mm. But then um, Slack is open all the time. Mm. So you can keep discuss continue discussion even after the session is over or mm. talk talk time is over. Mm. Mm. I found it quite uh, useful. Mm. Yeah. And how how even like um speakers have to get used to all this um apps like this Google that's Meet, additional work yeah, yeah. sharing screen right. answering questions setting up the pointer yeah recording right yeah. right but thomas is a uh youtuber so you are very familiar with all this already <laughs> no. <laughs> no no we had a little bit of uh time we spent oh. a little bit of time to share your slides so that's yeah. kind of thing right you're yeah, talking about so, so setting up um I, I think that's extra skills that we've learned right uh, during right. the pandemic as mm. well mm. So what was this uh, main topic of this workshop? Oh, so it's um, mainly on magnetic fields. Uh, okay. Focusing, oh, that's your field, yes. Yes, focusing on star forming and galactic environments. Okay. So it's a school, it's not a conference. We okay. focus mostly on um, students being able to learn. So we got lecturers, we okay. invited lecturers to give like a lecture series mm -hmm. uh, on star formation, on FRBs um on galaxies um also like we try to cover like simulation theory observation so that uh -huh. they, they get a taste of everything uh -huh. and hopefully inspire them to um learn more about magnetic fields and maybe make some lifelong friends and collaborators in the future oh that's good yeah because we have actually we have several students coming from overseas which was a good. very good very good uh, especially after the pandemic so the the border controls have relaxed quite uh -huh. a bit uh -huh. uh, so there was this opportunity for people to come on site talk about their work they were encouraged to bring posters 
Okay. Um, so I, I was very pleased to see like students um, interacting and mm. talking about their work, their posters, um, and also learning about um, more stuff about magnetic fields along the way. Good, good. Mm. Did you did you also give a lecture? Uh, I didn't because I was you the didn't. I was the organize I was a co-organizer. Okay, so there okay. was a lot of work to do uh, okay. behind the scenes, uh, managing all the setup and also on uh, the, the Q and A. Um, so we were taking turns to co-chair the session. So I, I did oh. not give a talk at that time. It was, but oh. yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, I I guess that's a huge amount of work. Yeah. Okay. But I'll be giving a talk next week for the conference that you're co-organizing. Ah, FRB. in Taichung FRB <laughs> conference. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So you must be very tired now <laughs> doing the well, organization. Well, I'd say I'm not doing much, so uh -huh. I'm okay. The okay. people in Taichung oh, the are, are LOC. Busy. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. How many students did you come come to your winter school? I think we had about almost um maybe about 40 on site okay and then there were about like almost um more than 50 online oh, okay that, yeah that's a big school yeah so, so it was open to a lot of people to join online okay okay mm. okay so uh, i've been actually started in december uh, post of mm. december okay okay so it's actually it's been two or three months two months and a bit yeah okay. two and a half months okay uh, yeah Mm, because we we had a long break for the Lunar New Year, right, 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 um, right. Okay, and the right. Lunar New Year was a very interesting experience for me as well here, because mm -hmm. I thought like a lot of things would be closed yes, during the first few days, and I might not have anything to eat. <laughs> right, but it wasn't too bad. Like Seven Eleven, Seven Eleven, and Family Mart were still open. Some of them outside campus. Oh yes, outside of campus. Yeah, outside. yeah. So it was okay. So okay. I, I managed to survive. Okay, them, okay. Which was okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm. So how's your uh, postdoc life now? Now you work independently, right? Yes. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Before you had the supervisor when you're a student, you yeah. have a supervisor, but mm -hmm. now you're independent researcher. Mm. So do you do enjoy or, or? Yeah, I think. Are I, you lonely? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of both. I think uh -huh. it's it's nice to. I think I I work better with where I talk to people. I like right. collaborating with people. Yeah. So I try to attend more meetings if I can. Right. Uh, and also I will oh I will also also be joining the Astro PH like to discuss thank you, thank more you. about yes. journal clubs, um to discuss more about recent papers. Right. Uh, so I think that helps to keep us up to date with mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the field or mm -hmm. in other fields as well because we're supposed to be um, it's helpful when we know more about interdisciplinary stuff. Mm -hmm, so I think mm -hmm. that that's something I really enjoy, like also interacting with students. Mm. Um, one of the things, I think self-discipline is very important mm -hmm. as a postdoc. Right. Something that I'm still working hard to become better at. <laughs> but that's one thing. Um, other thing is probably coming up with ideas of projects of what mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm um it's also something that's challenging but i think it's part of the training mm, uh, to mm, become mm. A, a good postdoc mm. so i'm still navigating it um, right that's all you become a postdoc you have a freedom to what it, whatever research you you like to do mm -hmm. you can do but then that also means you have to discipline yourself because mm -hmm. if you don't decide you know no one's there to to you know to help uh, you to help you decide yeah, so yeah mm. i think that's one of the challenges and also if you did something wrong maybe no one can tell you <laughs> <laughs> whereas like when you're a student your teacher right, can tell you. yeah when you're a student yeah, yeah. your your supervisor is sharing responsibility so oh, yeah i think that's somewhat related to like the research environment um, okay a little bit about that okay i think i i i I just wanted to say a little bit about like how the research environment I find in Taiwan. Okay. Because I think people thank are generally very friendly and helpful. Uh -huh. um, and I, I see that like uh, asking questions, like mm. lots of students like to ask questions as well in um, the seminars mm -hmm. or even amongst each other, I, I see like students discussing. So I think it's, it's a good environment to work mm. in. Uh, there's opportunity for conferences and meetings. I gave a talk recently at TPS, which is the uh, a huge annual meeting yes, yes. Uh, in Taiwan across many different fields in physics. That's, that's physics meeting, right? Yeah. 
and then this was the picture. Then mm. You got the uh, uh, presentation prize, right? Oh, yeah, I did. The best uh, oral presentation prize. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I, see, I found your talk was excellent. Oh, thank you. Um, and then, so this was taken during that talk. Um, and then this was the winter square organized. So I just took a photo with the poster. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, very and nice. this was my desk on the first day of work. So it's very clean. Uh -huh. it's, it doesn't look like that anymore. Is it here? Yeah, In it's this here. University? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's much cleaner than my office. <laughs> this. <laughs> Maybe because you work really hard. So this was how it looked like on the first day. It was very clean. Very beautiful. Um, but but it doesn't look like that anymore now. So it's okay. really it's a bit messy. And my plants are starting to die. Maybe because oh, oh. that's not so good. So. I know. I'm not sure why. Maybe because there's not a lot of sun. I'm not near a window here. Maybe. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. It's it's a problem I haven't solved. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, so I took them home to be mm. placed next to the window. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So so I think this this is what I I found since I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's quite similar to being uh, the research environment in the UK when I was a student. Okay. Uh, well, as a student, our, our desk is smaller, so I, right. don't, I don't get such a big desk. <laughs> right. Um, but generally, people love to ask questions, people help each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that I really enjoy, um, mm. being in academia. Mm. Yeah, and we still get opportunities to go on conferences and meetings to mm. talk to other people in mm. other universities. That's good, that's good. Um, and maybe the work-life balance we've already sort of discuss a little bit just now mm -hmm. yeah but i think that's something that um i'm still trying to achieve mm -hmm. a bit difficult <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah I'm, I'm trying to work on that a bit better yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. maybe as faculty you can give us some advice on how to achieve what life balance well so my life uh, changed when i went to us mm -hmm. so when i was two then i was working 24 7. really yeah wow. so you know i liked research so mm -hmm. i worked worked hard hard, mm -hmm. hard but then i went to us and then i saw people even good researchers mm -hmm. you know take break mm -hmm. weekends at night mm -hmm. and then so i learned okay i need to be more efficient mm -hmm. so then you know i tried to be more efficient you know mm -hmm. i work hard during the uh, work time mm -hmm. and then i i rest or, or have some vacation during mm -hmm. the weekend mm -hmm. mm, some fun time relaxing time so mm. so mm. any tips to be efficient to be more efficient efficient i think the having a big picture um then mm -hmm. before you started starting work mm -hmm. you know to to decide which part of the work it's important oh. and then try to focus on mm. these i think uh, in my experience that's important because mm. there are some details that uh, you can spend time forever mm. but then uh, you spend forever time and you improve a tiny little bit there are mm. these there's this kind of work uh, mm. everywhere mm. Mm. Okay. and then it's actually not so efficient to spend the time on this mm -hmm. mm. So it's prioritizing what's important. I think so. I think in my my opinion, okay. I think that's important. Mm. Oh. Good to know. Yeah, because I think that's one of the jumps I find when I was a student becoming a postdoc. Right. There's a lot more things that uh, we need to do, like mm. administrative stuff mm. or uh, even different kinds of research that you may be mm. wanting to find answers to and then you may want to attend some classes or mm. like journal clubs or meetings, mm. lots and lots and lots of meetings. Which ones do you go to? Which ones you right. don't? You, you need to, you know, yeah. select wisely, yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I think that's probably one of the things I'm still learning mm. Mm. To, to be better with my time management. Mm. Mm. Well, for example, like, uh, uh, so I'm an observer. Mm -hmm. So you, you observe a very important target. But mm -hmm. the, you also have a data of not so important target. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, which one you want to spend more time? It's mm -hmm. it's obvious, right? You, you want to spend more time on important target. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do everything perfect, then, you know, and then spend a lot of time on not so important targets, you know, that takes all of your time mm -hmm. on weekends and mm -hmm. at night. So, mm -hmm. but that's after all it's not so important target mm. right so mm. 
Mm, I think that's mm, a good yeah, analogy. Think, uh, it's some one example. Mm. Good to know. Yeah. Mm. So that, I guess that brings me to like the living environment as a comparison. <laughs> okay, a beautiful picture. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think uh, living in in Taiwan uh, generally is like uh, people are very friendly. Mm. The cost of living is more affordable as well. So mm. uh, compared to the UK, for example. So mm. in terms of rent, in terms of food, okay. Uh, utilities like gas, electricity. I think Taiwan is generally more affordable. Okay. Um. And I've already mentioned earlier. I think the food is really good. Good. <laughs> so I like the food. Uh, and and living here is generally very convenient and accessible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example. For mm -hmm. example, you can buy flight tickets in Seven Eleven. That's what I found out recently. Flight oh, ticket? Although I haven't tried it myself, but I saw I it on the machine. That. Yeah. You can. You can. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then obviously you can get parcels sent to Seven Eleven. Yes. Can, yes, that's good. You can pay for your phone bills. Uh -huh. You can get everything there, almost right. everything. It seems, right. yeah. So I think um, convenience storage is something that I I particularly enjoyed here. Yes, very useful. <laughs> yeah, yes. very useful. Uh, public transport is very reliable and fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's also one thing I noticed. That's really nice here. Yeah, and I I put a photo. So then this is <laughs> the biggest uh, big city, <laughs> the biggest shopping mall nearest to yes. us. Um, and then this is like uh, how we survive here. So this is where the food is. Ah, oh, Seven Eleven. Yeah. Convenience store. This is in Xiao Chufu. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then so um, it's a students' cafeteria. Yeah, it's uh, a, there are a lot of cheap restaurants. Cheap uh -huh. food. Uh, you can see McDonald's at the back. Yeah, uh -huh. so this is where you get lots of food. Um, and recently it's the what do you call it? The it's um the the plum flower is yes. what it called season. So this is just um, at the garden, just behind, nearby our campus, inside our campus actually. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So you can see lots of. Uh, I I did not. I couldn't find the pictures I took. So there mm. were pictures of the flowers that I took. And yesterday was the last day of the Lunar New Year. So traditionally, um, people eat um, rice balls and sweet soup. So this is red bean soup, and this is the rice bowl. So I took a photo of that. Did you, did you eat that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. On the last day. I didn't, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> you can get it from the shop, like just, okay. just near the campus. OK. You don't have to cook it yourself if you're uh, lazy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Very, very nice. It looks mm. like a moon. <laughs> so. I think that's very why nice. we eat it on the last day. Apparently, it's to uh -huh. signify like reunion okay, okay. with family. So you okay. have a family dinner at home. Uh -huh. My family is not here, but I still like to eat sweet stuff. So I still got myself one. Very yesterday. nice, very nice. Yeah. yeah. You are more getting uh, uh, familiar with Taiwanese culture. Yes. I, I ate regular food yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Be because this is available every day, I think. But yesterday there was a long queue. Ah, uh, really? Because okay. it was the festival. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can eat it anytime. Okay. okay. You like. Good. Good. Yeah. Good to good to know. Um, you're enjoying the life in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. mm. So may I ask, uh, what kind of research uh you're doing uh in Taiwan or you're planning to do in Taiwan? Right. I know you just arrived, but. Mm. 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 What's your plan? My plan, mm. right? So, um, I'm I'm currently looking at radio polarization. So I, okay. I worked on. I mentioned a little bit about that earlier. Mm. Uh, but particularly, I'm interested in depolarization. So uh -huh. what it means is that uh, you probably see something that's strongly polarized. Okay. Say seventy percent, and then um, you expect it to be strongly polarized, but mm. when you observe it, it's not there. So okay. it's not polarized. So what's causing this depolarization? Mm, mm. Um, so I'm, I'm currently looking into that um, in galaxy cluster scales. Okay. So we're talking about like lots and lots and lots of Milky Ways combined together. Okay. Um, in that kind of scenario, um, what what can be causing the depolarization of radio galaxies mm -hmm. in the background? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's still work in progress uh, at the moment. Are you are you running a simulation? Um, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm building some models to okay. make, making uh, building some models to calculate this, mm -hmm. and then um, trying to quantify what sort of how much the level of depolarization and what might be causing them oh, in in different okay. scenarios. Okay. Yeah, mm. so things like shocks or because we we may get shocks when like galaxies merge. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what situations like that cause depolarization or mm -hmm when uh, a little galaxy falls into a big one mm -hmm. uh, and stir it 
would mm. that also cause some kind of depolarization because there's okay. activity so things like that uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. mm. i think magnetic field it's invisible directory so i think mm. running simulation it's more important mm. i think to mm. to understand magnetic field mm. Mm. and it's also hard to reconcile simulations with observations because observations are very difficult that's what i find you mean magnetic field yeah so observations of radio so to right. understand magnetic fields. right so when we talk about like polarization mm. when we talk about the radio antennas mm. um when you do observations even yes. if it's not in the radio observations have errors that we need to worry about yes. we need to worry about foreground mm. how to get rid of those properly uh how do you clean the data how do mm. you reduce the data so observers do a really hard job in doing that mm. and then theorists like myself we try to come up with models mm. <laughs> to try to explain observations and mm. i think it's important that all of us work together to yes, find, an, yes. find a common answer mm. yeah i totally agree that's mm. very important mm. Mm. so what your your daily research life like um so you're if you're running simulation you're coding most of the day or you're thinking about model building a model all day it depends uh -huh. so like uh on when on a on a coding day then i yes. might be doing coding most of the time okay uh, but sometimes you have like uh, i think people who with experience with coding will understand you have bugs okay uh or when your code doesn't compile then uh um, right. try to come come back to the pen and paper thing and try to work out what's causing the problem mm. one of the challenges i find is that sometimes you feel that it's very easy to calculate mm. something mm. it makes sense mm. but when you try to do that in code it's a different story sometimes different. it doesn't translate directly oh okay yeah you have to think a little bit more mm -hmm. when you're trying to plot something for example right it seems really simple at first mm. uh, but in coding language sometimes it's not as straightforward right so, right mm, that, that's my personal experience uh, mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. right okay okay oh there's a question maybe okay mm -hmm. uh, oh thomas uh oh. i want to ask question that uh that uh the researchers in your home country active oh that's a very good question uh -huh. actually yeah so um i don't have much experience of doing research in brunei itself because i was mostly in the uk and mm. here um but from my uh, limited experience i mm. think like um in in brunei I, um, at the moment mm. there's still a lot more focus on teaching uh -huh. um and re research is like definitely improving mm. uh, but still on the way um but in terms of astrophysics it's probably not as active compared to other fields in physics okay so um as far as i'm aware of um fields like green energy and mm -hmm. applied physics are more on the engineering side Mm. Um, those are more active at the moment, uh -huh. um, but people are generally getting more interested in astrophysics. I think okay. it's it's um, getting it's improving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the current situation. Mm. And I think like watching documentaries or like popular TV shows about like astrophysics that yes. really help to encourage uh -huh. people, especially young students, to to um, know more about astrophysics. I think that really helps. Mm. Mm. Maybe you can become the first, you know, astrophysics professor in Brunei. Oh, maybe that, that's that's that might be possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's um, actually reminds me of my last slide. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're doing for time, uh -huh. but um, I was thinking like, oh, so so uh, I saw that with uh, the previous sessions with mm -hmm. Da and Jasper to talk about what their goals are. Yes, um, I was about to ask. <laughs> right. And and as students, I think like they would like to graduate on time. They want to write more papers. Right. But I guess at my stage professionally, I think maybe more long term goals would be to become a better scientist. Mm. Quite general, mm. but I think it's a bit. I think there are little things that we need to take care of to become a better scientist mm. to get trained better. Um, I I like to teach, so I think to become a better good, teacher good, as well, yes. um, and to interact better with students, mm. encourage them more to learn, and perhaps a more practical goal would be to get a faculty position, like what Thomas mm. mentioned. Mm. Um, so so that's that's my 
three three little goals summarized <laughs> well i think that's wonderful you know um teaching is a you know mm. uh, for the future to mm. to grow nourish young scientists mm. so teaching is very important mm. and then to teach you need a faculty position it's better to be in a faculty position so, mm -hmm. mm. so it's related yeah yeah i think i think that's very good and as faculty you need to do research so i guess that means that you have to be a good scientist yes that, that. <laughs> So it's a three in one mm. <laughs> solution. Right. Yeah. Mm. But the, but I know you are very, very good. So okay. in the near future, you can reach these goals. I, I think, hope so. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm still working hard mm. <laughs> towards them. Yeah. What about your goals in research wise? Uh, oh. Is there any, you know, questions you want to solve or something like that? Uh, oh, you mean like a uh, uh, one big science question? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Like, you know, get a Nobel Prize or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably like a lot of people's dreams like in mm. science to, well, may maybe not specifically get a Nobel Prize, but I think to be able to contribute however little to answering a big question, I think that's mm. that's very important. Mm. And that's also also one of my my dreams to 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 answer, like mm. um, where, where did the first magnetic fields come from? Maybe I yeah, wouldn't have the full answer, Yeah, but if I can contribute a little bit to getting that answer with everyone else, that's then an I important think question. Yes, that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, we have a uh, little bit uh, time left. Um, is there any question from audience? The only question I have was about the astrophysics. It is perhaps something I just didn't understand. That is the idea of. I mean, I'm aware the sun has a magnetic field and the earth and other planets and so on. But you seem to be talking about the whole galaxies and even galaxy clusters having magnetic fields. Am I misunderstanding this? I can't remember what a radio galaxy is. Uh, how can larger structures have, magne have magnetic fields? And how can you study that? Right. So, um, so the sun and the earth, so things like this have magnetic fields. And then if you think about like, our solar system, so planets have magnetic fields when you have a bunch of planets and a star like the sun you have the solar system the solar system and then if you have bigger things than that so it's a bit like having small things to big things mm -hmm. so if small things are magnetized you have lots of small magnets together mm -hmm. then when you build bigger things you would expect bigger mag magnets mm -hmm. so in that way you can think of like galaxies and galaxy clusters as a bunch of bigger things okay. which are magnetized so they have magnetic fields too Mm -hmm. But because these are such large scales, right, then the magnetic fields would be weaker than mm -hmm. what we would expect. Mm -hmm. And because they're weak, it's hard to measure. Mm -hmm. But we need to measure them because at such large scales is where we may have some hint as to where the first magnetic fields come from. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, like with smaller things like um, galaxies and galaxy clusters, which are probably having more activity, then this sort of activity, you can think of it as like moving things, then you probably lose information of the history of where the fields, how the fields look like at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But if you go on much larger scales, you can think of it like empty spaces. It's it's quite quiet. Mm -hmm. Then if you have the first magnetic field somewhere there, mm -hmm. then you may be able to tell what created it or what sort of properties it has. So that's why we would like to probe to much larger scales to understand the history of oh. where the first seed fields come from. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for asking a good question. Okay, how about Tom? Do you have any more questions? The question is this. Same as that, because mm -hmm. I also want to know the, why does the you have such this large scale magnetic field? Hold it. How to create is of just large scale magnetic field. Right. So um we we don't know, right? So the thing is like, for example, some, there are some models that some people who think that the first magnetic fields are created during the Big Bang. Could be possible. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just planted the the universe expands and then things form mm -hmm. and then we appear. <laughs> so that's why we have magnetic fields. Some people think that maybe we don't have magnetic fields during the Big Bang. Maybe it's only after we have the first stars and the first galaxies, then this first stars and galaxies starts to um, generate magnetic fields and then it 
input this magnetic fields into the nearby mm. intracluster medium, for example, then that might have created the first magnetic field. So we still don't know the answer. Mm. Uh, and that's why um, people are still working very hard to understand um, this direction. Mm. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Tom, for asking a very good question. Um, so it's about time, but uh, Abia, Abina, do you have any messages or something you still want to share? Perhaps to close, uh, I'm not sure, do we have mostly have students watching this or like and people from yes, various yes, ages? Students, yes, um, well, students, but uh, there are people with various ages can, ah, can take this course. So, right, mm. right. Oh, that's, that's really cool. So I hope that this, um, little session has inspired you to learn a little bit more about our universe uh, or to actually have wonderful. have a bit of a insight into how like um astrophysics work in real life mm. um, not just being a student but also a uh, daily working life mm. um, and if you have the chance uh, maybe you can consider uh, visiting taiwan <laughs> uh, either on holiday mm. or to consider studying here mm. or working here i mm. think uh, that would be a good experience Mm, mm. Just wonderful. Mm. If if you like, uh, you can also contribute one or two courses in oh, this lecture. Okay. If, if you like teaching, there's mm. something you could consider in the future. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Uh, might have might have a think and have a look at what this course is like. Right. Um, right. 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 Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Is there any last minute questions or comments? If not, uh, thank you very much for joining the session. And then thank you very much, Albina. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, okay, then we will finish the session here. Uh, thank you for joining and then see you next time. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Leo. Bye-bye. See you next thank time. You. Bye -bye.